So hello and welcome everybody to another talk of the Bite Size Talk series um, that is offered from uh, by the NFCO community. And we should mention that it's receiving support from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. So we're thankful, thankful for that. Uh, so today uh, Phil Ewells is back and he will tell us more about MultiQC and how to customize MultiQC reports, for example, for your own pipeline. So thanks for joining us, Phil, today. Thank you for having me. Sorry, sorry that I've ended up doing two bite-sized talks in two weeks. It's uh, been a bit of a reschedule shuffle. I hopefully you won't be too tired of my voice already. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, today's talk is a bit of a break from what, what I've spoken about previously with, with bite size in that it doesn't really talk about NF core at all. It's, this talk is purely about multi-QC, which is one of my other kind of pet projects, which I've been working on for a few years now. But multi-QC is used very heavily within the majority of NF core pipelines. So um, we figure it's kind of a, a relevant topic for, for most NF core developers, certainly, but also people using NF core pipelines as well. So um, today I'm going to start off with a quick introduction just for those people who might be watching who have no idea what MultiQC is. Um, and then I'll talk about a few tips for people developing pipelines for, for recommendations to get the most out of MultiQC. And then a few recommendations for people who are running NF Core Pipeline. Um, especially, usually this is most relevant for people working in kind of facilities or large scale routine processing places. Um, but of course it can be used by anyone. So. What is MultiQC? Uh, basically, MultiQC is, is to help this little guy who's sat wading through uh, text file, uh, hundreds and hundreds of text files at the end of his analysis or her analysis, all these log files in the terminal, trying to work out whether the analysis worked or not, and also trying to work out if there are any bad samples in his project or her project. Uh, and what it does is it takes all of those text files and it visualizes them within a report. So you get a nice kind of shiny graphical thing that is, is more human readable. Um, and you can kind of see at a glance, hopefully, roughly how everything's gone and if there are any samples which might need a closer look. Um, it supports, in a single report, uh, multiple different bioinformatics tools. Um, 100 and 115, I think, or something like that we're at the, we're at, at the moment. So the vast majority of um, kind of commonly used bioinformatics tools are represented out of the box. Um, and it also handles multiple samples. So if you have five samples in your project or 500 samples in your project, MultiQC will suck up all those different log outputs and um, summarize all of that into one single report for you. As well as the HTML report that it generates, um, MultiQC also spits out a bunch of other files, uh, which gives you a nice kind of standardized output. Bioinformatics tools are famous for, for lacking standards in file formats. Um, so MultiQC takes does some of that legwork for you, and, and you can choose to have, it gives you tab separated files by default, but you can have YAML or JSON as well. And all the different 115 bioinformatics tools will produce output, which is in roughly the same flavor. So it's useful for downstream processing as well. Um, MultiQC is written with Python, so it's pretty easy to install uh, if you've got Python set up on your system uh, using a Python package index here. So pip install MultiQC, it's also in Conda, um, or you can use it with Docker or Singularity. Um, there's a Galaxy wrapper for it. Um, most places you, you're already running software, you'll find MultiQC there. I think there's a Debian installation and all sorts. Um, then to run MultiQC, you, you call the MultiQC command, which is the tool name, and then it needs a minimum of just one argument, which is a file path. So in this case, I've given it a dot, which just means the current working directory in the terminal. And MultiQC then will recursively look through every file and folder in that path uh, and see what it can find. And anything that's not a log file or that it doesn't recognize, it will just ignore. So it's been designed from the ground up to work with analysis pipelines where you have all of your results in a folder and then you just run multi-QC folder and it will find what's relevant. If you want, it can also take explicit file names and as many different paths as you want, if, that, if that's better for your setup. Um, and that's it. Once you've run multi-QC, it will tell you it's generated an HTML report and then it's up to you, the human, to do the, the difficult bit, which is to look at that report, understand what it's telling you and, uh, and kind of continue with your analysis. I started MultiQC back in 2016, I think, uh, and it has 
wildly exceeded my expectations. Um, I was looking this up yesterday. If any of you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen uh, or just passed 2000 citations now, paper citations for a multi QC paper, which is just utterly kind of mind blowing. Um, I certainly didn't set out with any expectations of this. It was just an internal tool that we needed at, at SciLife Lab for our, our own internal QC. So it's, it's very humbling that multi QC has reached so many people um, and helped so many people. Uh, there you go, 114 different bioinformatics tools um, are supported, uh, more coming in all the time. Those citations uh, I find quite terrifying, if I'm honest. You can see I've got it's kind of going up and up, and it makes me I'm always very scared to push a new release because I always think there's always people using it. Uh, what happens if I've broken something? Or worse, what happens if I find out that something has been broken for the past three years and all these citations are wrong? <laughs> but anyway, that's for maintainers' nightmare. So. Um, and if ever I'm slow to respond to you, if you've opened an issue or pull request at MultiQC, uh, this is my defense. Uh, we've had just over a thousand issues created on GitHub now for, for MultiQC, as nearly 150 of them are still open that need closing. And there's been over 500 pull requests, so people contributing code. And people's contributions account for the majority of tools supported now. Uh, so it's a really a collaborative effort, though I'm I'm the, I'm the gatekeeper and I hold all the keys. So it has to get past me to get into multi QC, but most of the code is not written by me anymore. And again, there's always a long list of pull requests open because it takes me quite a long time to go through them. That sounds a lot. Um, it is. I worked out how many days it's been since the first commit to the multi QC repo, and it works out at about one issue every couple of days. So uh, it's a lot to go through. So please, please be patient. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Right, that's the introduction. So you're happy with what MultiQC is. Uh, you've written an NF core pipeline. Uh, MultiQC is working, uh, but what, what kind of tips and tricks can you do to really squeeze the most out of your MultiQC report? An easy one to start with, um, all of this, everything I'm gonna describe is in the documentation by the way. By the way. So go to multiqc.info and you'll find all of this and a lot more. Um, I'm mostly just gonna pick out a few things for you to kind of go and look up if it sounds interesting. But anyway, an easy one to start with is optimizing how fast MultiQC is to run. Generally, MultiQC runs within a few seconds for most things. But uh, if you are running a lot of modules and if you've got large numbers of samples, it can start to take a few minutes or in extreme situations, you know, up to an hour. So it can be nice to try and uh, tune that optimization as much as possible. And there are a couple of things you can do very easily to do that. Um, firstly, I would recommend running MultiQC yourself with this extra command, profile runtime. And that will actually add an extra section to your report uh, where MultiQC kind of has an introspective look at itself and works out what it's been doing. Um, in the log, it will tell you how long it took to run um, and how long it's spent doing different things. Um, so in this example here, you can see the vast majority of the times was spent looking through uh, the different files it was given and trying to find which ones are relevant. Um, and actually, then once it had that file list running the, the modules and, and generating the, the report was quite quick. And then within a multi QC report, you get uh, plots like this, which tell you how fast or more how slow different, um, different search patterns were within multi QC. So, multi QC has a, a bunch of different ways to find relevant input files. Uh, the simplest is by a file name pattern. So, if a tool always gives the same suffix for its output files, they're dead easy to find. You can just kind of search through the file list and, and find them that way. But many, if not most tools don't do this. And you can just call, it might just be a standard output log to, to the terminal, or you, you, know, you can call your summary file, whatever you want it to. So then MultiQC has to look in, within the file contents to, to find those files. And, and that can be a bit slow. Um, and Picard here, you can see is one of the worst culprits often. It's got lots of different outputs it can find. So there's lots of different search patterns. And each one of these has to look through each one of your files um, to see if there are any matching strings. So here you can see, okay, what was run? What are the, the main culprits in terms of kind of slow searching? And, uh, and then you can know what to focus on. Um, and then once you've kind of figured out what, what, what's actually taking time, uh, what do you do about it? Firstly, especially within the context of writing a pipeline, it's very easy to tell MultiQC, okay, you're only going to get output from these different tools. Don't bother looking for a Picard output because I'm not running Picard. Uh, so that speeds up things quite a bit. Then you can optimize those search patterns that I mentioned. Um, firstly, you, if, 
Picard, lots of modules have sub modules. Um, so Picard is one tool, but it has about, I don't know, 15 different kind of sub tools. And so you can disable search patterns for the stuff that you're not running. Um, and also you can use file name patterns. So maybe the tool doesn't have a constant suffix, but maybe within the pipeline, you do always have a predictable file name. So you can tell MultiQC to use that file name to find files instead and overwrite the default file name search pattern. Uh, and that can speed things up a bit. There's a section of the documentation I've linked to here, which talks to all the same stuff. So go and take, have a look if that sounds interesting. Okay, that's kind of the boring stuff. That's just like optimization. Um, I had a quick look through a couple of uh, NF core pipelines to see what was frequently set within a multi-QC configs. And I've split up kind of a few th common things which make sense. And then I've, in the next slide, I've got some stuff which I haven't seen so much of, which might be nice. Um, so let's start off with the, the common stuff. One of the most frequent things that people want to do is change the default order um, of the different sections within a report. Um, and so that's quite easy to do. You have a config config file in the YAML and you define this key top modules and you say, okay, those these are the modules I'm most interested in in this order and MultiQC will run those modules in, in the order you specify. It will still run everything else um, after that. So if you just want FastQC at the top, you just do top, top modules, FastQC, and that will float to the top. Um, if you want some more kind of nitty gritty detail, you can specify the module order config, which has a whole bunch of different sub keys. Um, and this again, you can use to order the modules. You can also use it to run a single module multiple times with a kind of sub uh, file, file name filter. So this is most commonly used for, for example, FastQC. If you're running FastQC twice before and after trimming, you can tell MultiQC to run the same module twice uh, but only on as different subsets of files. Um, and again, you can also overwrite things like uh, the, the title of a module and a bunch of other things in here. Um, one of the most difficult things that MultiQC has to do is work out the name of each sample. Um, there's no kind of idealized situation where we just magically know what your sample IDs or identifiers are. We have to kind of do our best guess. Um, usually that's by looking at either the file name of the log or kind of trying to find the input file name and basing it on that. Um, but of course, if you have .fastq or .bam or whatever, you have all these different extensions, uh, then they look like different identifiers. So MultiQC tries to get rid of those kind of standardized extensions so that you end up with that core identifier. And then everything lines up nicely across the different modules, especially in that top table called uh, general statistics. But it's generalized, so we have to do our best. And sometimes different pipelines have different extensions, which are kind of added on. So if you see that happening, especially in general stats, that rows aren't lining up, or you see duplicate samples, which should be just one, you can tell MultiQC what your custom extensions are in this config and clean them up. So you get really nice, clean, short sample identifiers with no kind of additional cruft. Uh, some people get really annoyed. So MultiQC has to deal with massive numbers of samples, everything, like I say, from like one or two samples up to thousands. Um, and tables get really unhelpful when they're super, super long. You can no longer kind of summarize and take an overview view, which is the whole point of MultiQC. So by default, MultiQC, when a table gets to, I think, 500 rows is the default, something like that, it will, instead of doing a table, generate what's called this B swarm plot, which is basically like a dot plot. Um, if you find that really annoying, you can push up that threshold uh, at which that switch happens to effectively disable B swarm plots. And a few people have done that within NF core pipelines. Right. Here's some stuff I didn't find, which I thought might be nice to have. So take note, developers, even if you think you already know <laughs> everything there is to know about multi QC. Um, one of the things from the multi QC does by default at the top of every report, it says when you ran it and it shows the, the input files that you gave it. So the, the directory where you told it to search for files. Now for next row, because the analysis always runs within temporary work directories, usually the, the place it runs is not really very interesting at all. It's just gonna be work and then some long kind of hash identifiers. Um, so it might be nice just to turn that off and you can just set show analysis paths to false and MultiQC will not print that at the top of the report. Um, by default, in the templates, for NFCore template, we have a, a report comment at the top saying this report was generated by this pipeline. 
But you can also go further than that. You can add comments to specific um, modules within your report, and you can add as much or as little detail as you like here. This is a great way of documenting the results of your custom pipeline. We have the documentation on NF Core website, sure, but you can embed stuff within the report here so that when people are reading through, you can say, in this pipeline, we're running this tool in this way, and this is what you should look for. More documentation is always better. So yeah, let's let's see some section comments in there. That'd be great. Uh, we don't really ever seem to customize the report logo. I was thinking that would be something easy to do, stick in the NF Core pipeline logo um, up at the top of the report if we wanted to. And then, um, yeah, customizing plots themselves. So multi-QC is going to be very extensible and very customizable, and that extends to every single plot. If you know the identifier for the plot that you're interested in, you can tell multi-QC, actually, I want this to be the title. Actually, I want the axes to be this, axis labels. You can customize pretty much every aspect of the plots, even when they're coming from a built-in module. Um, so you can might be able to tweak certain things here and there to make them more understandable, or better suited to your outputs. Um, and then on a similar line, you can also customize the tables. So maybe you have percent duplicates reported twice from two different tools, uh, and you only want it once, or something is not useful because of this or that. You can tell MultiQC to uh, ignore or hide certain columns within your tables, which might be good. Um, something else which is used quite a lot within NF Core and, and actually has been a wildly successful kind of feature of MultiQC is the ability to inject custom report sections in without needing to write a, multi, uh, a module. So without write, needing to write any Python code. Uh, this is called custom content and would typically be like output from pipeline scripts. So maybe you've written a custom R script or Python script within your, your, your workflow. So it's not like a general tool uh, outside of the pipeline. If it was, it'd be better to write that as a multi-QC module so that everyone can benefit from it. But it's just like a really specific niche thing. Then you can generate and you have control of the output. So then you can insert that into the multi-QC report using custom content. It can be uh, a config file. It can be JSON, it can be custom HTML, it could be images if you want, though I generally sort of dislike having images in QC reports because they, they really bloat the, the HTML file size. And um, so if you do images, please, please make sure you don't have one per sample because quickly that will just crash the, the browser that tries to open the report. Um, and basically all you have to do is most of the time is, is append to your file name underscore MQC dot JSON or YAML or whatever the file format is. And then as long as your file content looks kind of roughly right, multi-QC or try and figure out what to do with it. You can also configure lots of stuff. So again, you can tweak and make all the plot axes and titles exactly as you want. Uh, different ways to do that with different file formats, check for documentation, and especially check this repo, which has the test data, which multi-QC uses. Custom content is difficult to document because you can do anything. <laughs> so how you can, can't document everything. Um, but what, what I do have in this repository is lots of different examples uh, that I've made over the time. So you can kind of dig around and find different ways of doing things and model your, your custom content on that. Right, that was all for people developing pipelines. What about if you're running an NF Core pipeline? Uh, what can you do to tweak your own personal multi-QC reports uh, separate from the rest of the NF Core pipeline community? Um, basically, all the NF Core pipelines, because it comes in the template, has a, a parameter for the pipeline called MultiQC config. And using that, you can give a custom YAML file. Um, and it's important to say that this is additional to the config which ships with the pipeline. So the pipeline might be doing its own configuration stuff. And then you can add your own config on top of that, and they work together. So you can do stuff like uh, conditional formatting, for example, is something we use at the NGI. So in your house, if you're running the same pipeline for the same data type, you might say samples fail if they have under 80% alignment. And I want to flag those so that they stand out nicely uh, with red here yeah? and, and maybe warn stuff which is between uh, 80 and 90% 90 alignment. That easy to do. Any table in multi QC report, you can have these conditional formatting rules and you just set up, um, get, get the identifier for that column and set up the different rules. Uh, you can add project level information. So uh, if you 
are generating multi QC uh, reports from uh, limbs, for example, where, or you have your own custom analysis, you might want to say, okay, this project was called this, and you want, might want to add some comments about what exactly it was you did, um, or even put in different kind of custom sample names, which are different to the identifiers that multi QC finds. I'll show an example of this in a second. And then you can also kind of style the report. So you can um, put in a custom logo, as I mentioned earlier. So you want, want to have like your Institute logo in the corner of a multi-QC report, no problem. Uh, you can actually now, as of the last year's um, release, just have a custom CSS file. So if you know a little bit of web development, you can style stuff completely differently and have different background colors and you know just hack on the, <laughs> the, the default template for multi-QC quite easily with a little bit of additional CSS. Um, and if you want to take it another step further, you can actually develop your own entire template and supply that to MultiQC. Um, so different ginger template and really change what goes into the report and, and how it's rendered. So quick example of some customization. This is an example report, which you can actually see on the MultiQC website. Uh, if you go to the top menu under examples, it's the one that's the, the NGI one. And this is a pretty close, uh, it's, it's, taken from the reports we generate generate at SciLife Lab at the NGI where I work. Uh, and these are some of the things that we've done in our config to add additional information into the report, which is useful for our users. And this happens again on top of the, the NF core pipelines. So the most obvious one is we add a title. In this case, we have a project identifiers and a, and a nice title, and that's done with the config attribute title. Uh, we have a subtitle under there with a little bit more information, This, in our case, I've removed, removed identifying information here, but this would normally be, we have like a project title where the PI has said, this is what the project is about. Um, and here we have a report comments, which is similar, but just longer format, slightly different styling. And here actually it's, this comes from the end for actually pre and of course, because this example is pretty old, um, but uh, it comes from that the, the next row pipeline has added this, but you could customize this to be whatever you want with reports comments. Uh, we've put in a logo and also with that logo, there's a URL and a title. So if you hover over it, it says the title. And if you click it, it will take you to the, the custom URL, which in this case is the homepage. Uh, and we've got this little panel here of custom information, which is called reports header info. And this can be any kind of key value pairs you want. So this ties in really well with a limbs or something. If you have custom like report level information that you want to show uh, just to sum summary information. Um, you might also notice there's a couple of extra buttons up at the top here, um, and that has been done with uh, something called minus minus sample names, where you give it LTQC a, a, just like a tab separated file with all your expected sample identifiers and then alternative sample names. Um, and the column headers then form buttons at the top. And if I click, uh, in this case, user supplied names, it's, that's something custom I've labeled it, then you see all the sample names down there switch. So we, by default, have a NGI identifiers, which is what's useful for us. But then our end users might not really know what that is. They can click that button and see all the sample names that they supplied to us really quickly, really easily. And all that does is just pre-populate the multi-QC toolbox really quickly with lots of different sample matches. That easy to do can be very, very helpful. And then, of course, if you really want to, this is an example of kind of going to town with uh, customizing your report output just to give you a flavor for, for what's possible if you really, really go for it. <laughs> this is a little Easter egg in MultiQC. So see if you can figure that out with minus minus template. Okay. Um, I won't make, be too much longer. I'm running over a bit. Sorry. Looking to the future, a couple of things to look forward to with MultiQC. Um, you might. Those of you who have heard me talk before might recognize some of these slides here. Uh, most of this stuff has been planned for multi-QC since about 2018 <laughs> or 19, uh, which by coincidence is around the time that another one of my projects started um, kind of taking off. Yeah, and that one is called NF Core and uh, <laughs> sucked up some of my time. Uh, anyway, this is stuff which is being actively worked on uh, and will happen um, and is, is stuff I'm kind of excited about. Uh, to kick us off is um, basically refactoring the code base so that it works more as a Python library rather than purely a command line tool. Um, and so now if you want to, if you're using like Jupyter Notebooks or custom Python scripts, you can import MultiQC and you can run it on a, like this, like in a kind of programmatic way on a folder and it will generate a report. What you can't do yet 
is kind of what I want to be able to do is, is kind of generate a multi QC report object and then pull out specific stats and specific plots kind of on demand and that kind of use all that internal functionality that, that's there. Uh, at the moment, that's a bit tricky, um, but that I'm hoping to, to get there soon. So that it'll be a really useful interactive or kind of script based analysis tool as well as a command line tool. Uh, and then the other big one is, is mega QC, which is my, my poor forgotten child that <laughs> has been a bit abandoned, but despite my best efforts to ignore it, is being picked up by, by others in the community and is being actively developed by a small, but a slowly growing kind of core of, of, of end users across the world. Um, Michael Minton in the States is probably one of the key contributors and also Thor, um, Sylvie Norvenen in uh, Norway. Um, anyway, mega QC, what does it do? Uh, when you run multi-QC, you get kind of one report object and that's kind of frozen in time. So you've got the samples you ran it on uh, in your project and, and that's it. But many people are running in a facility, like doing clinical work or whatever, you're running multi-QC the whole time, hundreds of times a day, uh, and you're generating this kind of longitudinal data and you want to track things across projects. Um, you can't do that in, in multi-QC alone, but this is a companion tool, mega QC, which is like a, a regular running web server tool. And multi-QC, when you run it, can spit the results to this, this tool as a JSON file over an API. Uh, and all that is then stored in a database for you to interactively query, view, and plot. Um, this is quite an old uh, demo I did for a talk a while ago. But this shows pulling plots, which I've set up in uh, MegaQC and saved as favorites. And it has an interactive tool for generating uh, dashboards. So this is really cool. Like you want to have a TV up in your, your lab or something showing showing statuses or so you can keep a track on whether whether the trend lines are working properly or whatever you can kind of really quickly drag and drop your uh, a quick dashboard together with your favorite plots uh, and whip it up so that's saved and then you have like a static not so an html web page which you can then load and, and play around with so it's kind of you can see the different types of plots here we've got single values plotted against one of the bar graphs uh, distributions all sorts uh, so you can really get the most out of all the multi-QC data, which is being found in your samples uh, and visualize it and interrogate it. Uh, and that is sort of ready to go now, but it's still being actively worked on in a big way. Right, with that, I'll wrap up. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, check out the multi-QC website. Like I say, all of this was documented. Uh, so have a read through there, see if you can find anything new. Uh, all the code base is open on, on GitHub and there's a, get a chat for MultiQC, which is a good way to kind of get my attention for quick questions uh, and happy to respond there. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks a lot, Phil, for this uh, introduction to MultiQC and showing also advanced uh, advanced tools and characteristics of MultiQC. I'm sure we all learned something today. Um, we, have, we do have one question in the chat. Um, so they were wondering if we like they were wondering more about this example that you showed on, cha on quickly changing sample names what 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 kind of like configs or files would we need to generate to actually change the sample names right um so you can do it a couple of ways well, this is off the top of my head uh, i think you can do it in multi qc config but the way that i would recommend doing it is with this option this flag minus minus sample names when you run multi qc uh, and like when it's a tab separated file, so the, the first column should be all the identifiers which MultiQC itself is finding. So, you know, in this case, you know, we, we run with the limbs. So we, we know when you run MultiQC, these are the samples we expect in this project. So we know those identifiers. And then in the next column along, you have the equivalent names on the same row. And each column will get its own button along the top, um, which will then sort of be able to, to switch through. Um, Thinking about it now, this might be slightly difficult to do within more uh, NF core pipelines because this is an additional file and flag uh, to, to provide to, to the multi QC module. Um, so you might need to look into doing that within the YAML file, within the config file, which you can give to multi QC. And I'm pretty sure you can do it, but I would have to check to be certain. If you can't, then maybe let us know and we can look at um, either putting that into the NF core module or or I can look into whether it's possible to do with a multi QC config file. Thanks a lot. We have also another question. 
uh, by Moritz, um, any recommendations for large next flow pipelines at multi QC? Uh, usually we use that collect um, to, to make and mix everything and pass it to multi QC. So, um, but however, this can sometimes crash with many samples. Yeah. Yeah. The way that next flow works has always been sort of a bit ugly, <laughs> really, for multi QC um, because next flow is very explicit about your files and you need to kind of stage them as inputs and everything. Uh, whereas multi-QC kind of works really nicely when you're running it interactively and you just have a folder and you just run multi-QC. But with Nextflow, you need to you need to be really explicit about staging those inputs. Um, so the short answer is no, I don't have anything better than that, I'm afraid, um, because you need to stage them. Um, I've talked to Paolo about this kind of various times over the years and uh, we've kind of discussed ways to make it easier, but not really ever come up with anything better. Um, Multi-QC itself, if you want to give explicit file names, uh, and there's very many of them, people have run into problems with like VC Bio and with Galaxy and stuff with this, where the command line gets so ridiculously long that it crashes kind of bash or whatever environment it's running. In that case, you can put all the file names into a single text file and then do minus minus file names text file, and it will go through all of those. But that still doesn't really help with Nextflow because you need to still stage those files as inputs. So you have to declare them as inputs. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's the best I've got. Right. So in that case, it's not possible to just pass the whole folder. Um, you, you probably can do that. Yeah. Um, I'm mostly thinking about, yeah, no, that's a good point. So I'm mostly thinking about lots of different processes because you need to stage each one of those process outputs in. Um, but you're right, if you have lots of different files, then um, you can certainly just stick them in a directory and pass that one directory. As long as it gets staged as an input, multi-QC command is dead easy. You just do multi-QC dot because you're working within that isolated work directory. So that should work fine. Yeah, so we should explore this for NFCO pipelines then. Mm. Um, okay, if you have any other questions, you can also go ahead and unmute yourselves. I've just um, given rights for that. In the chat so far, we don't have any other questions. I'll pop these How slides up on, oh, sorry. How long did it take you to make the 90s mode of MultiQC? I did that back in the early days when I had lots of free time still. <laughs> um, actually, less time than you would expect because uh, the the default template is rendered with um, Bootstrap, a CSS framework, and someone else had already made a Bootstrap theme uh, using all the right class names and everything called, called GA for GeoCities, um, if you're old enough to know what GeoCities is. Um, so I kind of hijacked that and then just added on a bit of extra flair on top. So it actually wasn't too bad, uh, and it's it's kind of nice. I, I do like sticking Easter eggs into, into software tools. <laughs> Bit of MC Hammer never goes amiss. Okay. But yeah, what I was going to say is I'll I'll put uh, slides up as a PDF onto the, the Slack channel on the Bite Size Slack channel. Yeah, perfect. Seems like there's no other questions. So thanks again, Ellen. As you mentioned, the slides will be uploaded and the talk available also. Uh, and we can continue any further questions on Slack. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you very much.